Welcome to the ITNIC podcast. My name is uh, Sindre Hoplan. Today we'll discuss the differences between startup accelerators, incubators, and venture builders. If they work for startups, and, and if so, what's the success factors? And we're super lucky to have with us some, some great people. Uh, we had Angel Garcia, Director of Startup Bootcamp IoT, Data and Cybersecurity. We also have Patricio Hunt, Managing Partner of Intellectium, and also the ITNIC President, Bernard Farero. Welcome to you all. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to Thank be you. here. <laughs> So, uh, to, to start off uh, with you, Angel, uh, you've been involved with Startup Bootcamp for a while now, uh, a couple of years. Uh, you also invested in, in a couple of the projects yourself. Uh, what is it that you find so interesting with, with uh, this type of program uh, compared to just regular seed funding? Well, I think these are different things. I mean, seed funded accelerators and incubators, there are a lot of animals that probably we're going to discuss during the, during the podcast are completely different things. I think it's, uh, accelerators are, to some extent, trying to prepare these teams, uh, sometimes even don't, don't even companies, these teams, to be some kind of investable uh, company or an investable startup, right? So we are early, I think, in the, in the process of the funding. So I don't think that we have to compare seed investment with uh, accelerators. There are completely different animals. The, the things that we are looking for are different, Um, and probably something that we're going to discuss today, right? Right, right. So, but what, what, what are you finding appealing with, with these kind of programs? What, what are the big pros for you? Well, as a personal level, um, Accelerator is something that you are really much more deep into the people. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot about the personal relationship. I mean, really helping in a day-to-day -day basis to these guys. Uh, as an investor, I mean, you, you take some distance, right? I mean, it's much more a financial investment. It's also a financial investment from an accelerator, but these are other much more personal factors. I mean, you are, you are going to really try to help these guys to make their dream a reality, right? That this is, you're, you are going to the personal level. Um, so it's something much more, much more personal. Like when you are act as an investor, then you start to have your legal implications and your financial uh, rules and this kind of thing. So you're moving to a different level. I think that both um, elements are necessary in an ecosystem, but are um, doing different things and acting in a different stage. Hmm. Hmm. And Patricio, uh, you have a different approach, uh, more than like a traditional accelerator with a six-month program, right? Tell, tell us a little bit about your approach to startups and how startups approach you. Well, we have different models, actually, because uh, we are running the Techstars uh, Startup Next uh, program, which is a traditional program where you have a selection process in the beginning, applicants uh, that... Uh, are interested in, in getting in, etc. And that's a batch process, and we do it uh, twice a year. Uh, and then we have our, uh, let's say, our own uh, boutique accelerator, which is Intellectium, and there we do whatever we think is best uh, for a company and depends a lot in the uh, context of the, the company, the team, the stage of the company, uh, our interest uh, in, in the company as well. So we do a very different thing and there we usually do one or two companies every year, only that. Uh, and we uh, really uh, do, a, let's say, we, we do a custom fit program and we just uh, concentrate on what the team uh, really needs. And it's a very different approach. So why did you choose this approach instead of, the, as, as you are affiliated with the Techstars, mm -hmm. a more traditional program, what did you choose to, to do this kind of thing? Uh, basically, we are doing things as, uh, as we see uh, they are required. Uh, Intellectium is not something that we have uh, devised in a very specific way. We are always... Uh, sort of innovating on the periphery of the of things, and uh, we are uh, looking and finding exactly what are uh, the best opportunities that we have there, and we go behind those opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, for example, last year we founded a mobile venture builder because we thought uh, that was a um, perhaps a more interesting model for us, and it was uh, probably 
uh, a model that was uh, better for our skills. So uh, now we are very focused on that uh, program as well. And we are doing things as uh, they are coming to us and taking opportunities mostly rather than have a, a very, um, let's say, focused strategy based on exactly uh, things that we think uh, are uh, that we have to do. I mean, right. we are more open to innovation mm, right. rather than uh, designing what we want to do. Exactly. Mm. Huh. And talking about venture builders, uh, Bernat, uh, you used to be, uh, ITNIG used to be a very traditional accelerator. You used to call it the hacker accelerator once, uh, but but it, it changed a bit uh, the last time. Can, can, can you tell us about what, what has changed? And, and when you speak to people now, what do you call ITNIG? Mm -hmm. We never meant to be a traditional accelerator. <laughs> Actually, that's why we call it the hacker accelerator. <laughs> uh, but basically, what we, do, what we did in our short span of life is uh, experimenting. So we tried different models. Uh, we, we, we experimented. And we reached to the, to the conclusion uh, that a fixed program uh, with a set of mentors, with a certain amount of resources devoted to each project, um, with the need of having to do n uh, number of projects every n number of time uh, was not possible for us. Uh, we studied the model, we analyzed it, and we realized that it was not possible, at least for us. Um, so we decided to move away from this model and and start companies and commit about uh, committing the companies that we were growing. So increasing our participation and our effort in smaller companies instead of doing um, a, a model based on quantity and statistics. So we, we, we tried to focus on, on smaller projects, on a small <coughs> number of projects, and, and commit on these projects uh, forever, not just uh, for a period of time, but making sure that uh, if we earn something, uh, we take something out of this project, it will be along with the other entrepreneurs that are, that are doing it. So we, we, we take uh, big st bigger stakes in the company that we work, and we take full responsibility. We don't look for winners, we make them. Uh, we make winner teams and winner projects. We are continuously striving to find uh, the greatest talent, uh, and we take responsibility <coughs> of funding the projects, of, of the success of the projects in the long term. So that's a difference in the model. Mm -hmm. so we don't we don't participate in a very in a very early stage, in a short amount or close amount of time. Uh, we take responsibility almost forever mm -hmm. in the projects. Right, and Angel, you have been uh, like Startup Bootcamp is is one of the more successful uh, accelerators in Europe. One would say, and uh, but but the business model business mo model itself, as Bernard says, they went away. From it, uh, that was their own choice. But, but uh, how are you looking at the business model? Uh, do you find it successful in itself, or is it too early to say? What do you think? Uh, it's a very good question because I think that the other day I was speaking. Well, I don't remember what it was, but it was talking about accelerators, right? And I did some kind of uh, research about, and I find out that what I think it was at Angel List that there are two thousand accelerators in the world, hmm. which is not true. It's not true. Hmm. Which is true is that there are 2,000 companies or entities that are claiming to be an accelerator. Um, because at the end of the day, I mean, you take a look to all these 2,000 websites and all of them are saying the same. I have workshops, I have mentors, and I'm going to move you to the next level and blah, 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 <coughs> blah. Um, but at the end, the reality is that most of them, they are starting today. And in two years from now and one year from now, they have to rethink about the model because the model is not sustainable. Yes, by definition. I mean, they are trying to have some tables, some chairs, and if you are not, um, don't have enough money in order to deliver enough value, so are trying to make money uh, with the equity that you are taking in these companies, but at the same time, you don't have enough resources in order to deliver enough value to these companies. Well, it's trying to do a, a circle with a square. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a challenge. I think that there are some players out there. I'm not saying that we are better or not, but we have a different model. I mean, we have these corporations supporting our programs. I'm talking not only about the startup bootcamp, but also Techstars or Black and Play, mm. or the guys from Y Combinator of, <coughs> of 500 startups in the US, right. that we have these corporations investing or supporting our programs in order to have access to innovation. 
Um, and that's what makes our business model sustainable. Hmm. I mean, there are few accelerators in the world that they have been in the market for more than six, seven years sure. around the ones that I'm describing. Yeah. Um, of course, that we are changing things internally, but what we have found out is a way, a sustainable business model that if you look around, is, 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 is not in others. So Always have to rethink about different ways to do it, different ways to find... Um, sources of finding hmm. in order to be able to um, get money back on this equity stake. As I said before, I mean, if yep. you don't have enough resources to invest in these companies, right. the likelihood to get a lot of money from this equity stake is right. also very poor, right? So um, we have been doing a lot of things, also rechanging things, um, focusing more and more in the vertical thing right. that uh, probably we're going to speak later. I hmm. think it's one of the futures of accelerators trying to be yeah. mo- much more specific in something. Right. Um, but again, I think that we have this specific business model that allows us to provide or deliver um, at least more resources and we believe that more value hmm. than other players in the market. Hmm. And uh, Patricio, uh, you you have also been involved with these traditional type of programs, uh, <laughs> but as we talked about, like the accelerator accelerators has only only been around for a couple of years. It's, it's a fairly new new um, thing. So uh, when when can we say that the uh, accelerator is a success? At what time? Is it too early or? Is it in the future? What do you think? I think that, uh, like Angel was saying, um, there are many type of accelerators, and um, you can call accelerators uh, really just a, a, a few of them. Mm. Uh, so uh, basically, I think those that are focused on, on verticals uh, will probably be uh, more uh, successful in the long term. Also, the first uh, accelerators, uh, the ones that are more consolidated, like Y Combinator, Techstars, Startup Bootcamp, and, and a few others, probably because they were the first to market and because they have this effect of uh, being able to select the best uh, companies all over the world, etc., those are probably uh, going to stand out and going to continue being a, a success. And for the rest, uh, well, you have to, to, to see if uh, you can find a specific model that may mm. uh, deliver some special value to, mm. to the companies that you are looking for specifically, but should be like a very, um, uh, a very, um, let's say, uh, focused uh, group of companies. And uh, I guess those ones are the ones that are going to, to prevail. Right, mm-hmm. right. For us, uh, the model, uh, let, let's say, in, in our case, uh, we've been uh, going from the uh, hybrid uh, custom fit uh, sort of program that we deliver, and we only do that, as I said before, just for a couple of companies, perhaps uh, each uh, year. Uh, and then we, as, as also uh, Bernard was saying, we found out this uh, in, 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 uh, along many years and, and looking for what was the, the best uh, thing for us to do. And finally, we uh, came to the conclusion that a company builder was, in our case, the best uh, thing to do to concentrate our deliberate uh, efforts. Uh, On the other hand, um, as I was saying also, you have to remain sort of open to innovate on the periphery. So if they come to us, a couple of uh, teams uh, every year, that we see that they're really good and we can help them, we do that. I mean, we help them in the way that they need and in the way that uh, is um, better for them to be to be helped. But our delivery efforts now are just focused on the company builder, which we see that is the best model for us hmm. in order to, to build companies. It's a kind of model... Perhaps it's more closer to what uh, Bernat is doing. Hmm. We we select uh, for, uh, we go all all the other way. I mean, we select the space in which we want to innovate. We uh, look for uh, a company uh, that would validate our concept. Then we uh, select the technology. We build the technology. We get traction on the market. And if we get real traction, then we'll go and try to find a team that would be able to take this to a success or to a spin-off uh, that could be successful in the long term. Hmm. So this is a complete different model. We believe, in, in our case in particular, that this is the best for us to do. Hmm. And we believe that's the model where we can be uh, more successful, and this is why we, we do that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or not? No, I, I have a question related to that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you do the question. No, so please, please <laughs> go ahead. Um, I think it's interesting to analyze what we define as sustainable 
uh, and and how sustainable is a goal by itself? So is it is it not profitable uh, the goal of of any business? So uh, shouldn't we create profitable business? But still, uh, I would I would like to understand how an accelerator can be sustainable, and and how an accelerator can be profitable, and what's the goal, and what's the time span needed for that. So I think that those are the the biggest questions. I realized that in the world, even the, the first accelerators in 2005, Paul Graham started uh, mm. Y Combinator. I think Techstars was one year later, no? Something like that, 2006. Oh, and these are the old examples, the oldest. From then, uh, many accelerators appeared, as you said. Uh, but I think none of them are still or, or have enough track record today to say that they are profitable business models. Even Y Combinator. So, uh, to, to say they, they are profitable, you have to set an, expe an expectation at some point, and you have to fit this expectation. But why Combinator grow so big that they kept increasing their expectation? So now they even expect to be way more big, and they are getting the best deal flow in the world. So when is an accelerator? When, when can we call an accelerator uh, a sustainable business model or a profitable business model? Is it mean, does it mean that you have a source uh, for investment that keeps coming, or or what does it mean to you, Angel, for example? Well, a sustainable model is something that you can keep in the time, right? Mm. Something that you can keep doing for a lot of time. Sure. And I think all these models are clearly sustainable because they have been in the market for a lot of period of time. Don't think about that the model is only to make money with the equity in the companies. They are also making money with the corporations. And... Um, but I think the, the, the best way to look at that, I mean, these guys have been in the market for a long time. Other guys are not longer in the market. Mm. So there are guys that are sustainable and guys that are not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and um, when you're talking about all these guys in the market, it, it's, it's a big <coughs> group, maybe 2,000 accelerators. You're, you're trying to get the best talent to start a boot camp every year or every year for every program. Uh, does it make it harder for you guys to, to attract the best companies when you're competing with suddenly thousands of other people around, around the world? What does this make? It's, it's becoming a very crowd space. Um, it's true. I mean, only in our last call this year, we analyzed something like 850 startups. Um, in the IoT and data space only domain. I mean, it's a significant number of startups. Of course, out of the 850, we easily find that half of these probably is not, are not fitting in what we are looking for. But I think that this year we spoke and we exchanged information with around 350, 400 startups uh, from a lot of countries all around the world. Mm. And then we nailed down the database and we tried to. So the, the point is that the space is so crowded, as I said before, and sometimes for entrepreneurs it's so difficult to understand which is the right choice for me, right? I mean, and sometimes they are much more focused in trying to understand how much money these guys are going to offer to me in exchange of uh, uh, how much equity, right. not paying attention in order to understand what they can get from the program, right? Um, uh, the reality <coughs> is that it's becoming more and more difficult to attract teams. Hmm. I mean, it's... Uh, um, especially there are locations that are very crowded, like London or Berlin, trying yeah, right. to, to move uh, teams away from these kind of locations is yeah. very difficult. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, we were probably the point is that you have to devote much more efforts. I mean, you have to put many more resources. This year we have uh, like seven, eight scouters working for four months, hmm. trying to find the best teams because you have to get in contact with these teams that are or in Poland, or in Russia, yeah. and you have to explain then the value that you can provide to them. Hmm. Because it's for, for them, as I said before, it's very difficult. You take a look to the website of accelerators, all of them looks the same thing. So, but, well, but this is a very economical deal for us, right? I mean, it's, well, but it's not about this. I mean, it's about all the things. I mean, what are the resources that you are going to get? Hmm. What's about the program? What you're going to do during the 90 days? Who are the guys that are involved in the accelerator? What's your background? So there are a lot of things to share with these teams, um, but it's an effort that you have to do in order to be able to share hmm. with these guys and help them to take a decision. And, and this, this again, does something with the business model as well, you know, when you, you can't find enough great companies to enter to the accelerator and the old companies are just divided all over Europe. Uh, how will this evolve, you know, in the next years if, if it, gets, it gets harder and harder and harder to attract good companies? How, how will, what do you think, Patricio? Well, 
if you look at what we do, really we are reactive. No? In terms of uh, Intellectium itself, we are reactive. If we find a team that we f feel <laughs> it's the right team and they have the right product, etc., then we invest resources. But as Bernard was saying, we don't have a, a specific N number of uh, startups that we are looking for to, to accelerate or incubate uh, each year. So uh, we are open to uh, find an opportunity and then invest on that opportunity. On the other hand, since that is a reactive um, strategy, then we decided to come up with the, the Venture Builder because that's a delivery strategy for us. So there we don't wait for uh, capturing uh, talent or acquiring talent. We just uh, go behind a company or creating a company that we believe in because we see that the trend is correct, the technology is the right time to invest in the technology, etc., etc. So in that regard, we are not uh, waiting for or we are not scouting to find the right talent uh, with the right idea, which is a more difficult thing to, to find. I mean, we are uh, first developing the idea, then we are finding the talent. But if you want to find both altogether, that's what it's uh, hmm. becoming more and more difficult. Yeah, yeah. So what we do is we, we bring together both. And we are very good and we can be very good. We, we believe and we are doing some, some progress in that regard, creating the opportunity. Hmm. Finding the talent is a different thing. We think we can do it as well. But if we do this in a separated way, we think we can be more successful and it's going to be for us easier to, to deliver a, a sustainable business model in time. Right, and but not uh, you're not scouting scouting at all for companies anymore. Like, h how are you picking? Because a venture builder, like, h how how are you picking your projects? How are you getting in touch with entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. So we don't get in touch with entrepreneurs. <laughs> we we used to do it in the past, and we devoted uh, a lot of resources to listen to projects um, and to meeting entrepreneurs. And that's a, a, a full-time job. And it, gets, it requires a lot, of, a lot of time. And it's one of the most important parts of any accelerator because it's where you get in contact with your deal flow and where you can select well. Uh, and an accelerator, it's all about deal flow and selecting. So uh, it's, it's a very important part. So we don't, we're no longer an accelerator. So we mm, don't, re don't devote resources to to screen projects or see entrepreneurs anymore. So what we do is we spend some time uh, investigating markets and we do, we plan, we do business plans, we do experiments on Excel, which is very easy. <laughs> um, and then we, we, we study, we're continuously connected and studying the opportunities uh, around the world that are raising money, that are trendy for some reason. And we try to extrapolate it in other markets. So. That's where we are spending our, our resources right now. We are analyzing markets. And of course, from Idnik, um, what we are trying to do is we are trying to attract talent, but not talent of entrepreneurs, uh, talent of people who can do things. So we love techie people. We love um, developers. We love marketers. We think that's the hard thing. The hard thing is to be able to do things uh, by yourself. And then... Anyone can become an entrepreneur one day. So the idea is not a hard thing, but finding people that can actually do it. Exactly. So, so, so we're not focusing anymore on the idea at all. So we don't want ideas. We don't want projects. We don't want pitch. No. Uh, we, we want people that it's interesting, that they can do things. And we are analyzing the markets because mm. there are so many opportunities out there. So at some point we try to mix them together. Exactly. And but you, you, yeah. I, I think it's, 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 it's very important, not only for accelerators or venture builder, any, any kind of player that we want to help to set up business from entrepreneurs or startups to have a very good understanding of the market. I mean, it's, we are in a very dynamic market. Things are changing so fast. Um, so have a good understanding and devote a lot of resources and a lot of time in trying to understand what's next, why this is next, is, is extremely relevant. Hmm. And at the end of the day, we also need uh, excellent people in order to execute these kind of things. Right. But it's very important to understand the, the space or the domain that you want to play. Exactly. And 
when you deploy a startup from from startup bootcamp uh, after like a finished program uh, do you look at it you know three months a half a year or a year after and say this was a success this was a success acceleration or do you have to wait until you see an exit or an acquisition or well at the at, at the end this ready with the startups depends how you measure success right that could be, most of the people used to say how much money these startup raise, and we have very good numbers, you can go to our website, um, or how many customers, or how successful the company from the sales point of view. Um, for me, there is another rate or another number that I think is very good, is how many of the startups that have gone through our programs after X many years are still alive. Um, and we have some numbers that are in our website that eight, I think right now is 82% of the 350 or whatever the startups that have gone through our programs are alive. It's an average, but after seven, eight years, there is a, a big number of startups that are alive. Um, and I think that this is a combination of a lot of things. Probably number one is, is the selection criteria. I mean, we spend a lot of resources in trying to bring the best guys, uh, mainly the best guys. Um, number two is the program. I mean, our program has been growing. I mean, we have been learning. I mean, when you are doing this for a lot of years, you, you, you understand the things that you have to do and the things that you don't have to do, right? But the main goal for our program is to really help these startups, early stage startups, that they already have some product and maybe some initial traction. This is what we are looking for, to really find the product fit and the market fit of what we are trying to do. Hmm. Hmm. Most of the startups, they fail because they are not able to find the product fit and market fit, right? Then they, it, then they have a lot of friction in order to get uh, sales or revenues or users. So friction, no significant traction. So no investor trusts you because you don't have significant traction and then get <laughs> game over. Exactly. So our main goal during the program, and that's why we use our process, our structure, but also our big network of contacts is to help these guys to move your assumptions to a real product feed, market feed uh, company. Hmm. Hmm. Um, because at the end of the day, you're a startup. I mean, you have your network, you are your co-founders, your network of uh, 10, 15 people around you, and you are trying to base them based on the assumptions or what you believe, what you think, and the people around you. Hmm. That unfortunately is not enough, hmm. right? Because hmm. you're trying to build something that pretend to be disruptive or pretend to capture a big portion of the market, well, the likelihood that you and your small group is going to be able to, to, to do so is, is a challenge. So we we put them in our process, we allow them to have contact with a lot of people, with very experienced people, hmm. in order to validate all these assumptions and to do this lean startup and test and to iterate and to change a lot of things in order to, by the end of the program, hopefully having them much more close to the product fit and market fit. Yeah, exactly. Because you have a much better product fit or market fit. Well, you might be kind of super great company or not, but the chances and the likelihood to be to stay in the market is going to be much more high. Yeah, and and Barcelona as a city, we're all in Barcelona. We're all operating from Barcelona, uh, a city that's growing very rapidly in terms of startups, innovation, and also accelerators, incubators, and venture builders. Uh, but not what, what do you think? Uh, is is it a good thing for a city in itself? To have a lot of these uh, players uh, active. Uh, when I talk to people at, at events and, and, and around the city, people are saying, oh, didn't know it was so many accelerators here. Like, this is a very positive thing. But for the accelerators itself, yeah, probably you would want to be the only one that's here, right? So what, what do you think? Do you think it's a, it's a good thing or...? I do think it's a good thing for society in general and for, for entrepreneurs, of course. They have a bigger choice. So I think it's good that there are 2,000 accelerators, and, and if there were 20,000, it would be better. Uh, another thing is that uh, accelerators are sustainable and profitable business models. That's another separate issue. But I think it's very good that we, we give resources to people that is thinking on uh, starting an idea, and, and they have no clue whatsoever where to start from. Or uh, So any kind of help you can give to these people at these stages, it's, it helps a lot. You know? Hmm. Hmm. So. Yeah, uh, Patricio, uh, you you are moving more out to, over to the boutique kind of doing an acceleration or uh, as a venture builder as you call it, uh, and and 
old accelerators are, are basically they, they have different type of cro- programs but they look kind of similar from from the outside uh, do you think more accelerators will you know evolve into this venture builder thing or how, how do you see the next five years well it's funny because you have here two uh, different uh, the two different people that started in sort of different ways but I think we are both going to the same uh, model no? Bernat and myself uh, on the other hand, Angel uh, started up with a different model, but with a, a better branding and better well-known company all over Europe, etc. So, and, and he's very niche-oriented, very vertically oriented. So, I think those are the two models that will probably prevail. I don't think there is um, the traditional. Um, uh, accelerators that just bring mentors into the companies. I don't think that um, could be sustainable over time unless they are uh, migrating towards uh, helping companies uh, develop their own uh, in in company um, <coughs> programs, uh, which is, for example, what what uh, Connector is doing. I think that would help a lot with sustainability for for them. But I think in the end, uh, in my perspective is that the best model uh, for some type of, uh, of people, for example, in our case or in the case of uh, Bernat, is the company builder. I mean, we feel more comfortable with that uh, model. We believe that we can create a lot of value with that model. And, uh, well, our progress so far is uh, uh, make me, making me think uh, that we are on the, on the right mm. track in that right. regard. Right. And there's always a lot of uh, developers and, and entrepreneurs uh, watching and, and listening to this podcast. Uh, and Angel, uh, to people that are thinking, should I enter an accelerator? Sh- is, is this the right choice to me? Uh, what, in your opinion, what kind of startup? Uh, what, what, what do you need to have to, to apply for an accelerator? What do you think? Well, as we said before, I mean, there are different types of accelerators. I think the first thing I, I will... I will tell the entrepreneurs is to do the homework. I mean, to understand the stage that they are right now, to understand any accelerator, what they are looking for, their accelerators or incubators that they are targeting pre-acceleration companies or pre-idea or idea stage. So there are different stages at these early days of the companies that they have to understand where they are in because different accelerators are targeting to different kind of teams or the different kind of companies. So the first thing is to do your homework, try to understand which are the accelerators, incubators, or venture builders that are really fitting in where you are right now. Second thing is trying to understand how these guys are going to help me. I mean, it's to, to really, the same way that when you are trying to raise money, you try to understand more and more the investor, do the same thing with the accelerator. Try to understand who are the guys behind the accelerator or behind the incubator or behind the venture builder. What's your background? How are you planning to help me? Be very exhaustive with that because it's some kind of marriage. Most of these relationships ends with an equity exchange, so it's going to be your partner. It's not going to be for the next three months. It's going to be forever. So do your homework. Um, and to be honest, I mean, the teams are more, much more successful where the teams that were much more demanding at the beginning. Hmm. Right? Being hmm. very, why you're going to help me? What are the things that you're going to meet? Can you this kind of list of things is something that you believe that we can achieve during the program, mm. trying to understand what are the outcomes of the program. Mm. It's not just go to a website, apply online. I mean, try to have these one-on-one interviews. Um, in my experience, the, the best things are the ones that are much more demanding, trying to understand what are going to be the outcome mm. of the accelerator. Right, so, right. Huh. And is there any like misconceptions uh, of, of startups uh, applying that they, they're, they're thinking that you can, can give them something that you can't give them? There are a lot of misconceptions, and I think this is one of, this is one of the issues of the, of the accelerators. I mean, I, I agree with Bernard saying that as much as we can, it's going to be great, as far as all of them can deliver enough quality value. Because it's, it's, at the acceleration, there is not a clear definition. Right? And as I said before, I mean, most entrepreneurs are confused. What, what does it mean? I mean, it's going to be a table and one mentor coming two days a week or whatever. It's going to be like uh, we do uh, 30 workshops, 15 people really helping me every day, plus uh, 80 mentors, whatever. So it's not clear. So, I mean, it's good to have a lot of accelerators even in Barcelona as far as most of them can deliver enough level of quality because if not entrepreneurs are joining this accelerator that maybe is not delivering enough level of quality 
and there is a bad feeling, right? Mm. And this is then affecting the others that we are trying to do in a proper way. Right, right. Uh, I think, think that we are not talking about a, a model here that is a pre-accelerator, which is what uh, Startup Next is, no? for mm. example. A yeah. pre-accelerator is something where uh, um, entrepreneurs can come and can be there for at least uh, six weeks, uh, can have uh, an exposition to mentors, yeah. but we are not requiring any equity from them or mm. any kind of uh, payment in any kind of uh, money. So, right. so basically we are just giving to them. Yeah. So that's a good uh, thing for them, I mean for entrepreneurs, in order to, mm. for, for the less experienced people mm. to take uh, and to have a first uh, feeling of what it is hmm. to be in, a, in an accelerator. So I, I think this kind of program is also a good thing for people with, without experience. But if you have uh, some more experience and uh, you've been already into a pre-accelerator or have some other experience which could help, then it's a matter of uh, finding out exactly what is that you are going to be given from that uh, program in particular and see if it really matches what you really need. Hmm. And, and you, you have some success stories as well, uh, like also like it, Itnig and, and, and Startup Bootcamp. Mm. Uh, what, what are, what are like the, the factors uh, within these companies that, that, that you call them success stories? Well, it, it all depends also. Uh, it begins by the entrepreneur. By the entrepreneurial team, I think it's one of the most important elements. The other element is uh, the the sector in which they are in and the time in which they got into that into that uh, sector. We had a very good experience in e-commerce. Uh, that was a company that was started <coughs> five years ago, and we have a, a also a very bad uh, story on another e-commerce company that started like. Uh, two years or three years ago. So uh, the thing is, three years ago for a fashion e-commerce, for example, was too late. And that was, uh, the, the thing was very good, but the, the opportunity probably wasn't there anymore because Salando was already there with a huge uh, investment and uh, ASOS was already in the UK. So it wasn't anymore uh, an opportunity, despite the team was a good team delivering on what they had uh, to, to deliver. So I guess um, if you take a look at those two issues, you probably uh, have 50% of the issues you need to take a look uh, already there. Then there are other other uh, issues like, uh, for example, the, the capability of the team to get investment, which is obviously something very very important as well. But uh, I would say those three issues are probably the the most important ones in my case. Hmm. It's clear everybody is saying in, in in all level of the chain, right? That yeah. the entrepreneur is the most important thing. Right. But I think it's much more important in this kind of. Um, vehicles that we are talking about, mm, uh, mm. venture builder or accelerators, yeah. to have someone um, open-minded. Mm. I mean, flexible and with the ability to listen and yeah. the ability to... Because it's, it's accelerators and venture builders are about that. I mean, mm. it's, there is no initial business plan that is going to be mm -hmm. made. So things are going to change. So And, and things are going to change much better if you are listening and mm. you are learning from what you are getting. Mm. So... Right. Um, you asked him before, I mean, with it, what you have to look at the accelerator or a venture builder when you are looking for. Yeah. I also I mean, they also have to take a look inside mm. themselves yeah, yeah. if they are ready to really go through this kind of process. Because, I mean, it's, 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 there are people that are not listening. I mean, it's hmm. people that are saying, I'm listening to you, but they are not listening to me, right? Um, and it's not that we have to take your decision, but you have to be open-minded, um, open to change, flexible. Those are very important skills that you should have if you want to be part of one of one of these companies or process right and and how is it for you to uh, because Bernard said that we are interested in getting talent like developers marketers the, the best ones but but you usually start with an idea right you usually start with the entrepreneur when you take people in how do you uh, like make sure that they have the right kind of talent already inside the team well, it's a combination of, of a lot of things and something that you develop to, from time to time, right? Yeah. To, to really understand. Um, just for you to put an example during our selection process, I mean, as I said before, I mean, we start with a big thing, a big database, and we nail down. And at the end, we finish with inviting 20 teams 
to Barcelona f- to stay for a week with us. From <coughs> this year, we have 20 teams from I think it was 12 different countries: Australia, India, and so on. So with these two days, we do a lot of things. For instance, one of the things that we do is to have some psychologists interviewing these these people. Hmm. I mean, it's uh, well something that we learn from the experience, trying to understand if uh, because someone could be a good entrepreneur, but at the end we need a team. Is the team going to be able to work together? Well, it's another layer of information hmm. in order to validate this makes sense or hmm. not. Hmm. Okay. So, um, right. Hmm. And, and Bernat, uh, for, for many, when I speak to people, a venture builder is something a bit cryptic. It's a bit new. And if I say venture builder, it's not given that everybody knows what that is right away. Uh, but uh, we just started a new company at Itnig. It's called Factorial. Uh, can you tell us a bit the process? Uh, I guess this is a process that you haven't done yet. But like, h- how do you plan to help this company within Itnig? How do you plan to support a, a new company? Because th- yeah, it's a bit special. We start something r- right now. Mm-hmm. So you say venture builder is cryptic. It's because we give fancy names to things. You know? mm-hmm. It used to be a group of companies. Right. You know? It's a group right. of companies. Um, so how, do, how does it work? It, it doesn't have a fixed way to work, and that's why we don't have a program. Or, you know. uh, so we try to, to look for talent continuously to work in our startups. Um, we do events, we do workshops, we do all kinds of stuff like other accelerators would do. Uh, but our goal is to find talent to work in our startups. And then, uh, since we start a relationship with these people, uh, a professional relationship in, in, in all of our startups, uh, we start understanding how do they perform, uh, how do they work in marketing, in, in development, whatever. And then, when once we know these people, we know how to perform, we know how do they work in their teams, then we are in a better position um, to think of investing on those people. So that's our funnel. Our funnel starts uh, through professional relationship. Uh, we work together, and then we consider, why don't we start a company together? So it, it's, it's the opposite way. Mm, right. So we, we try to look for performance, people who are uh, doers, you know. Uh, and then, we, we, at the same time, we analyze markets, and we come up with ideas. Uh, and we have limited resources. We cannot be starting everything in the world, like maybe Rocket Internet does. No? Hmm. So you know, we try to devote our, our, our small resources to the biggest opportunities we, we find. And that's how it works. We also get in contact with, our, with a network of investors that, that are very r- related to, to, to what we do, and they invest directly in our companies. So we never we never wanted to raise money uh, uh, in ethnic, so we would have a, a problem, a conflict of interest, because then we would have to accept projects and look for projects, and and we would have to enter projects in a certain uh, amount of time. Mm-hmm. So we try uh, our investors to we tell our investors to invest directly in our companies, and we are focused solely, completely on growing uh, our companies. Mm. And, and growing our companies as a business, because that's, you talked before uh, about misconceptions. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that getting funded is growing your business. Yeah. And this happens a lot with mentor builders and, and accelerators. So we have a sort of a conflict of interest here because um, we think that uh, our, our business model ultimately is, is exiting companies and, and having returns on equity. So uh, we push sometimes companies to get funded to revalue uh, to get revalued uh, and raise the value of the company and then our returns on equity are bigger but for business to make sense our um, the, the purpose is to grow as a business so to make the business sustainable but also scalable and and that should be the ultimate goal hmm. not funding and overfunding and overfunding which is what is happening uh, sometimes, and it creates sort of small bubbles in, in different sectors. Hmm. So I think that the purpose of a business is to grow with as little resources as possible and with as little dilution as possible. Hmm. Cool. Great. That was everything we had time for, unfortunately. 
45 minutes go by fast uh, but let's stay tuned for our next podcast in, in December uh, remember that you can catch the highlights from, from this podcast in video form on, on Ethnic blog and or on our Facebook and everywhere we are online uh, thank you again uh, Angel, uh, Patricio and Bernat for coming I really appreciate taking your time you are all very busy so I really appreciate it uh, and uh, my name is Sindra Hopla uh, remember to follow Ethnic for, for more quality tech discussions also in the future